Um, why use positive reinforcement? As I've been talking about so many times, that basically uh, it is a very harmless way of teaching. Um, what happens normally is that you will all agree that um, learners will not learn unless the uh, learning process is positive for them, is enjoyable for them. And it is, it is something, it, the, the positive reinforcement is something that uses the strongest motivators as triggers. Uh, like it will put in a lot of motivation. The child would like to put in a lot of motivation in terms of learning these behaviors that you want them to learn. That, think about this, that the child may not want to learn what you want to learn. But uh, when you use positive reinforcement, that kind of acts as motivators, as triggers to positive behaviors. Uh, it is a very successful tool to strengthen the learned positive behaviors. So when you have taught the child the positive behaviors, then it might happen that gradually the curve will go down. But uh, if you keep applying positive reinforcement correctly, the behaviors will be strengthened and you can build up on those behaviors and take the child far away further. Um, See, it doesn't cost much uh, that way because social uh, uh, reinforcement is also there, which you can pair with it. So it's very cost effective and uh, it's very easily available. You can use easily available materials that you have in your home that a child regularly uses. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now let's get to the specific uh, uh, populations such as autism. So with them, what happens is that, uh, you know, there is this article a uh, very beautiful article and I have put the link of this article in the resources. I would definitely want you uh, all to go uh, visit that link and read this article. What it tells us is that, uh, I'll give you just a gist of it, that you can see the image uh, below over here. So this is the brain of a typically developing child and this is something with child with autism. So these are basically connections, these are, these are neural path pathways that, uh, that you can see. So these are different parts of the brain and when information comes from outside, let's say an instruction. So it probably reaches at a particular point and based on whatever the type of instruction it is, the type of job it is, there are certain neural pathways that get formed and different types, different uh, parts of the brain synchronize uh, together to perform that task. And then the task is done and that neural pathway disappears. But, uh, you know, you can see over here that um, these pathways or these brain connections in, uh, in terms of uh, children or individuals with autism, they can remain synchronized for up to 20 seconds. What happens is that, so once you are given the instruction, the processing time, the processing time and the speed uh, is much more than the normal children. So uh, you have given the instruction, the processing happens a bit slower and you expect the child to work accordingly and it's not happening and bombarded with another instruction, next, next instruction. So what happens is there is this traffic jam that happens in the brain. Uh, of children with autism and they cannot function like that. So in the typical classroom, what is happening is that there are so many noises coming in, there are so many things happening around and the teacher is teaching and all these processes, basically switching between these processes is not very easy for these children. So initially, that does not mean that they cannot be integrated into mainstream classroom, that doesn't mean it. But before that, they need to be prepared for it. And how we can do is uh, through ABA one-on-one -on -one teaching using positive reinforcement shaping and prompts, what we do is we teach the child uh, certain skills so that we can prepare them to be integrated into the larger classroom settings. So that's why positive reinforcement is very, very important with uh, children with 